How wonderful it is to be back in this beautiful space. Our last time, of course, was Thanksgiving. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you to this ceremony to induct members of the class of 2021 to the Millbrook School chapter of the Cum Laude Society. Founded in 1906, the Cum Laude Society stands for scholastic achievement of the highest order. In keeping with our motto and our mission, Millbrook students elected to commodity must achieve the highest levels of academic success while enhancing the experience of their peers. Simply, they must live non civi sed cunctus in the classroom. Olivia Charles, Nathaniel Clisby, Justin DeFore, Molly Kassane, Anna Metzger, Shakur Mohammed, Jessica Piard, Fenway Powers, Leela Powers, Noor Rahman, Emma Shad, Sam Smith, Robbie Southwick, Sophie Stark, Hannah Stewart, Marilee Weil, Anna Wilson, and Hanji Zhu, the distinguished record that each of you have achieved at Millbrook has won for you membership in the Cum Laude Society. This is a fellowship of scholars whose purpose is to recognize excellence in academic work. As you pursue your college education and possible graduate studies, it's our hope here at Millbrook that you accept the honor of membership in Cum Laude as a responsibility to make your contribution to the ongoing search for civility, humanity, and truth. To begin the inductions, I'll now invite your advisor to speak on your behalf and present you with a cum laude certificate and pin, and for you to sign the log here of all of Millbrook's cum laude members. To begin, Mrs. Grover will speak on behalf of Olivia Charles. understand Olivia, you must know that she grew up as a ski racer. And racers hurl their bodies down a sheet of ice at speeds of 80 miles per hour wearing only spandex. <laughs> Lindsey Vaughn, one of America's best racers, was once described as having a blind resolve that is so total it's almost hard to believe. This very same can be said for Olivia Charles. Olivia throws herself fully into every assignment. Every misplaced decimal is carefully cataloged and will not be forgotten the next time. When the rest of the class is turning in their first draft, Olivia is turning in her third. Olivia's meticulous approach to her schoolwork does not result from pure passion and curiosity. She has plenty of both, but she gets bored in class just like the rest of us. They say that pain is weakness leaving the body. Olivia says that boredom is weakness leaving the mind. When bored, tired, or scared, Olivia doubles down because academic greatness is just around the corner. Olivia's blind resolve has propelled her to the top of her class, but she's brought us along with her. She is a two-year studer, and last spring, as we battled with the uncertainty of the pandemic, Mrs. Lacoste wrote that Olivia always made our classroom environment a better place. I've received comments like that about her in every class over the last four years. Olivia Charles has a blind resolve that is so total, it's almost hard to believe. But she's made a believer out of me, and I cannot wait to see the impossible feats that she will continue to accomplish after she leaves Millbrook. Congratulations, Olivia. If you have taught or had class with Nathaniel, you are aware of what he is intellectually capable of. I still recall his powerful presence in my class in his fourth form year. He kept everyone on their toes because at any moment, his carefree demeanor might turn toward a thoughtful yet passionate tirade against everything you just said. 
While Nathaniel's high-powered academic mind has always been on display, he brought a new level of intensity and focus to his sixth form year. He made it abundantly clear from the jump that he aimed to excel in all facets of his experience, and he has done just that. Most impressive to me, however, is not Nathaniel's sharp analytical mind or academic success, but rather how much he has given back to the community. Each community service, I see Nathaniel's leadership for the silo expand and evolve. While he would prefer to write humorous articles, uh, humorous back page articles about offshore drilling, he has also added much value to more delicate conversations, which included the November election and other concerns within the broader community. Lastly, Nathaniel has demonstrated a great deal of academic generosity, particularly as a writing tutor. Ms. Havard remarked that during the fifth form research process this year, Nathaniel gave up numerous study halls in order to assist students in that endeavor. These actions underscore Nathaniel's tremendous impact on Millbrook. He has undoubtedly made Millbrook a better place by pushing his teachers and peers each and every day while giving back in his own unique and unassuming way. Congratulations on your induction, Nathaniel, and your successful Millbrook career. We practiced that. Um, <laughs> next up uh, will be Justin DeFore. Justin steps back from the spotlight, literally, and he never seeks attention, but he's deeply engaged with his academics and with this community in ways that casual onlookers may not immediately notice. He particularly excels in and is passionate about math and science, engineering club, and programming. He completes advanced physics assignments seemingly effortlessly. He loves to challenge himself to achieve more than the required workload in these areas and to develop theories and test ideas. Amidst all of these passions, Justin keeps things cool and quiet, and he's modest to a fault. When he texted me to let me know he had been accepted into college, the fact that he used a single solitary exclamation point was how I knew he was really extremely excited. <laughs> His style is to find subtle, meaningful ways to contribute to the community. He is a head curator at the zoo, and the zoo staff trust his judgment and appreciate his consistent reliability and enthusiasm. When he excelled on our school esports team this past winter, the opposing coach called me to tell me that his students were astounded not only by Justin's skills, but his level of poise in his class in victory, and that he was now a role model for their team. Justin impresses people. His academic skills are fierce, and he engages deeply with work that he finds fulfilling. He, and he enhances, enhances our community in so many understated ways. Congratulations, Justin. There we go. Congratulations. I'd like to welcome the next inductee, Molly Kassane. If you're in class with Molly, you better be ready to go because she'll be ready to go. She has questions. She has ideas. She assumes that you have questions and ideas, and she wants to know what they are. She's done the reading, is not entirely confident that it's right, but is willing to be convinced otherwise so long as the reasons are worthy. Be prepared, be willing to take risks, and you will gain her respect. Otherwise, well, and by you, I mean, her teachers as well. I have taught Molly, and there have not been many times when I have met her standards. Does that make, make Molly sound cutthroat? Well, if, if so, that's not right. No one is a better partner in pair work or in dance class. No one cares more about the underdog than Molly does. 
not only in class, but in students, on the silo, in her personal relationships. Molly has demonstrated a deep compassion for those put at unfair disadvantage, and she has taken steps to help them. She would like you to do the same. Does that make Molly sound like a grind? If so, that's not right. Have you ever seen her paintings? If not, you should. They combine a love of bright color with careful attention to form. They reflect a thoughtful, introspective person willing to do the work, take the personal risks, and care for others that Molly is. That's why Molly is so deserving of induction into the Cum Laude Society and why I'm so proud of her. Congratulations, Molly. Entering Millbrook last year as a fifth former, Anna had never received grades on her work before, and it's possible that some of her academic success is the result of her not realizing that there were any grades other than A's. That Anna is an exceptional student is clear from her impressive list of AP and advanced courses, but it is what Anna actually brings to her classes, to her classmates and to her teachers, that truly defines her as a scholar. Her teachers reflect frequently on how Anna's positive energy, excuse me, positive attitude, enthusiastic energy, and love of knowledge inspire her peers. She seeks connections between her studies and the world around her, writing lyrically as Hamlet raging against the state in time of COVID, or applying her passionate love of architecture to designing housing for Millbrook's faculty as part of her ISR and her CES. Additionally, Anna is a generous scholar who is always ready to help her peers in class and in her roles as a studer and a PC. She's also the first in our advisor group to text anyone in the group about anything that they've done to just give them a little shout out for, for what they've accomplished. Anna, for the joy that you bring to our classrooms and to our community, I celebrate with you on your induction into the Cum Laude Society. Up next is Shakur and his advisor, Mr. Whiting. Oh, whoops. Sorry. Grabbed the wrong one. Um, <laughs> it was not. <laughs> I recall an academic comment from Shaq's third form that mentioned his reluctance to work with some students who approached group work less seriously than he. This is a prime example of Shakur's drive and focus. But I don't mention this comment because of that. I mention it because of excerpts from more recent comments. Things like Shakur helping to foster an active learning environment, or he authentically brings people together in pair and group work. While Shakur is driven, he is open to learning not only content and skills, but about himself as a student. Shaq listens to the feedback of his teachers and the input of his peers. He is willing to take academic risks and challenge the opinions and contributions of others. This can drive deeper discussions and improve classmates' experiences and understanding of the material, as well as his own. In his time at Millbrook, Shakur has demonstrated not only intellectual talent, but also intellectual curiosity. He is able to balance serious goals and intellectual pursuits with humor and good-natured interactions with peers and teachers. Much of his success can be attributed to Shakur's core, I'm sorry, core beliefs and values. They ground him with confidence, humility, and a solid work ethic, all qualities that have allowed him to leave behind his family and home in his continued quest for success in and out of the classroom. Congratulations on earning this well-deserved honor, Shaq. Thank you very much. To see Jess, you have to look twice. The first time, her warm smile and kindness envelop you. However, like her award-winning photography, you need to take a second look. Mrs. McWright phrased it well when she wrote, Jess recently completed a portrait series with fantastical maps 
masks that knocked my socks off. In some ways, it's an almost campy celebration of fall. Orange colors, fall leaves, warm sunlight. And then I notice she's added twists and turns throughout. Futuristic eye makeup, weird mask additions with metallic thread, absolutely engaging for the viewer. For over three years, I've watched Jess push herself academically, setting high goals for herself and extracting as much value as possible out of her time at Millbrook. When I taught her in biology, Jess's technical writing skills improved to an undergraduate college level. In the conclusion of her lab report on evolution, she expertly, expertly connected the gathered data to key concepts of natural selection, genetic drift, and how animals' natural populations evolve. But now look again, this time at Jess's creative expression. Jess's poem that won her the Millbrook Poetry Prize last year evoked in my mind rich painted images and liberated powerful emotions. Often Jess's voice is honest, straightforward, and laced with wisdom beyond her years. Introducing the poet Jericho Brown at one of Millbrook's forums, she spoke about his use of duplex form, fascinated by how altering one word in a sentence could change the entire meaning. Her analysis feeds her creativity. For Jess, the Cum Laude Award recognizes her dedication to learning how to express herself in various media. Jess always looks twice. I am so proud of you, Jess, for all you have achieved while attending Millbrook. Hi, everybody. I'm happy to have a chance to talk about Fenway because he would never tell you any of this himself. I'm going to call him, for the purposes of this speech, Fenway Parker Superpowers. Again, he would never tell you about his extreme capabilities, which include, but are not limited to, endurance. Taking on an increasingly challenging course load over the last four years, Fenway found himself on high honors and effortless, with grades that reflect his quiet persistence. Temperance. Operating without conceit, Fenway quietly lifts the community, offering help wherever it is needed. Humility. When engaging in group work, Fenway has been known to quietly take the lead, sharing the credit with his peers. Ingenuity. Fenway brings a calm approach to problem solving, while also keeping the learning fun and engaging for himself. Mrs. Clisby commented that when he comes to extra help, he has already unraveled the questions and put thought into the problems. Empathy. Fenway cares about justice and equality. He cares about people. In his music lessons community service, Fenway thoughtfully designed lessons for Oliver Bergset that he thought a nine-year-old would best understand. Not only has he proven to be an excellent student, but a very fine teacher as well. As Mr. Rossiti summarized so well in an official note earlier this year, Fenway is the embodiment of non sibi sed cunctus. Take those powers on your next mission, Fenway. Congrats on this well-deserved honor. Thank you. Congrats. Leela Powers is a savvy, dedicated, and high-powered student. Whether memorizing Shakespeare, celebrating her knowledge on an assessment, or diving into the Blaine, Leela has been a proven academic force at Millbrook School. Over the years, when asked the question, do you think you can get all A's, either by Mr. Hardy or me, her response has been a simple, of course, no problem. While there were trials and tribulations along the way, Leela has consistently held the highest academic standards. Outside of the classroom, Leela has made a tremendous impact on our boarding school community. We often speak about true mastery as the ability to teach something to someone else. Leela has put her true mastery on display for the last two years as a student tutor and is eager to help her peers achieve their highest levels of understanding. Leela has set a great example of what it means to be a student athlete, achieving elite marks while operating near the top of both the tennis and squash ladders for four years. It has been an absolute pleasure to work with Leela here at Millbrook School. 
While this award is an outstanding and prestigious acknowledgement of Lila's work ethic and consistent commitment to excellence, there is no doubt that Lila is just getting started in her journey. Congratulations, Lila. Um, next up, we have Noor and Mr. Clisby. Noor loves being the center of attention, especially when someone is praising her. You see that eyeball roll? That's how you tell. That's a good thing, because people like to praise Noor. She's good at stuff. It's not directly relevant to uh, cum laude, but even though she's never been a varsity athlete, the coach of every team she's ever been on lights up when talking about her. Her effort, her adaptability, her good humor, her ability to understand what needs to get done. All those qualities apply to schoolwork, too. Uh, too. Noor may not like public speaking a lot, but she makes a great moot court argument, and she recites poetry beautifully. She writes fluently in French and builds rockets and can make almost anything out of clay. Very few people do any of those things as well as Noor does all of them. If that were all, Noor would be worthy of inducti uh, being inducted into this society, but that isn't all. Noor constantly uses all of that talent and energy to make the world better. A lot of the time, though, uh, sometimes she directs that, uh, those efforts towards individuals, as so many of you know. A lot of that time, though, she works on bigger stuff. For example, she has been a driving force in urging Millbrook to be a more diverse and inclusive place. She's taken the risk of exposing her own faith, her own passion, and subjecting them to the inspection of the whole school. She has spoken directly and frankly to the people in power here who can and should change the way the school operates, and sometimes her suggestions have been welcome, and sometimes they have not. But that is the nature of dissent. I would like to say that Noor has done all of this tirelessly, but she hasn't. Because pushing an institution to shift its ways is exhausting, and sometimes Noor has been exhausted. The true testament to the value of Noor's uh, scholarship is that she has been willing to overcome that, that fatigue and persist. We're all better for her stamina and her strength, as well as her raw talent, and it's an honor to help induct her into the Cum Laude Society. Congratulations. And uh, next up, we have uh, Ms. Clark conducting Emma Schott. Emma Shad has impossibly high academic standards. If you are not prepared, Emma will absolutely let you know to your face, no matter whether you are one of her peers or her teacher. Don't worry, though, this is not hypocritical of Emma, as she is one of the most consistently well-prepared people I have ever met. Emma is going to bring her A-game to class every day. And by the way, I mean that very literally. Have you seen her report card? That's an A-game. So the rest of us had darn well do the same ourselves. Even though I rarely meet them, Emma's high standards are one of the things I appreciate most about her, and my colleagues agree with me. I have heard from even the most notoriously challenging teachers here at Millbrook that Emma is more than just a good student. She's a real scholar, someone who relishes digging into the research or grappling with tough issues. What's funny about this is that Emma actually loves nothing more than to come complain to me about a difficult assignment. I see you smiling, Emma, you know it's true. And then after she crushes said assignment, she laughs and admits that it actually was a lot of fun. Of course it was, Emma, you love this stuff, and the sooner you admit you're a giant nerd, the better. <laughs> Emma is also passionate about the world outside of the classroom especially in her work with the Walk a Mile in Her Shoes event and other issues around supporting women. She is also a peer counselor to the day students this year, so while she takes no prisoners in the classroom, she cares deeply about others as well. For all of that, Emma, and for pushing us to be better every day, you are richly deserving of your induction into the Cum Laude Society. I am so proud of you, and congratulations.
Next up, Mr. Whiting will tell us everything about Sam Smith. About two years ago, I was meeting with my advisees and mentioned that I had never had an advisee earn cum laude honors, and I was not sure that I ever would. Sam said, what about me? I replied, you think you will? He nodded and said, yes. While setting goals is important, the fact that Sam sets and focuses on goals is not the key to his success. Sam recognizes that academic achievement is not an individual process. Throughout his time here, Sam has approached his classes with positivity and as an opportunity to work collaboratively. Sam is often a leader in group work, and part of being a leader, and something that he does well, is recognizing when to listen and follow others. Through his four years, Sam has sought feedback in and out of the classroom. He recognizes when he comes up short and uses this to fuel his effort. Seeking feedback is one thing, but more important, Sam implements that feedback. He realizes that he can learn more from stumbling than from always being successful. The fundamental reason for his success and achievement of this academic honor is that like most things he tackles, Sam approaches his academic endeavors as a team effort. He leads, he follows, he listens, and he contributes. All traits that lead not only to his success, but allow his classmates to succeed as well. Congratulations on earning cum laude, Sam. Next up is Robbie Southwick with Mr. Livesey speaking. <clears throat> Gritty character building. That is what Robbie Southwick texted me this summer when I asked him about his COVID-influenced senior year. Shocker, he was right. Gritty character building. That's what Robbie talked about when he was home for the first two weeks of the year after being sent home for contact tracing. Tough way to start the semester. Don't worry, he got high honors, one, 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 and three, two effort grades. Although for Robbie, this year has been about building character, to me and everyone who interacts with him, Robbie has been showing his outstanding character time and time again. And the classroom is just one of the many places in which Robbie shows this character. Robbie's teachers rave about how hardworking and diligent he is. And obviously, his achievement in his classes is at the highest level. Most apparent in Robbie's feedback, in feedback from Robbie's teachers, however, is his desire to seek understanding. He doesn't just want to know the answer. He wants to know why the answer is the answer. Robbie cares about his grades, obviously, but the driving force behind this thirst for knowledge is the desire to be better, to gain knowledge so that he can be the best version of himself. This is why gritty character building defines Robbie perfectly. Those of us who interact with him think Robbie has incredible character already, but to Robbie, this is only the beginning. To him, the building will never end. Cum laude is just one step in that process. Congratulations. <laughs> Next up, we have Mr. Smith and Sophie Stark. If you prick us, do we not bleed? This line from Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice has always read like a memento mori to me, a reminder that no matter how the world sees us, we're all vulnerable, flesh and blood and guts on the inside. And in turn, it reminds us that being human, being vulnerable and bleeding when the pricks of life poke you is not the same as being weak. Sophie's grades, her rigorous schedule, and her generous intellect have earned her this cum laude honor. Her transcript is almost, almost, 
all vowels, like a sheep naming its favorite Swedish pop band, Abba. <laughs> her effort scores are mostly twos. Her teachers talk about her unflagging engagement in class and how she drives the discussion forward, always listening to her peers and amplifying their insights while adding her own. Hers is a truly generous intellect. That generosity is seen, too, in her work with student tutors, where she leads a team of generous nerds who volunteer their time to help other students lift their own academic work higher and higher. But the most impressive thing to me about Sophie's considerable academic success isn't the superlative grades or the teacher's comments or the academic leadership. It's the very human struggle happening just off stage that most of us don't see. Like many people, like many of you, Sophie struggles with anxiety. Like a bear trap, it can spring shut out of nowhere, crushing your body and preventing you from moving forward. It makes you bleed. And every time it happens to Sophie, she uses all of her tools and all of her strength, and she pries that sucker off of her leg. Sophie worries, she cries, she loses sleep, she fears imperfection, she wonders if she will ever finish and she worries that she won't meet everyone's expectations, won't meet her own expectations. And then she finds a way out of the trap, a way to move forward. It's a feat of strength and resilience that floors me, a heavy, invisible lift that makes her high-flying academics so much more impressive. Sophie, I'm so very proud of you. And next is Hannah Stewart. So you have to imagine that I'm Ms. Uh, Bennett. She can do that. <laughs> Hannah Stewart grew up at neighboring Indian Mountain School prior to joining the Millbrook community, so it's no surprise that she is a well-versed student. But what makes her so exceedingly great at school Maybe it's her thirst for learning or her curiosity to discover new concepts, or maybe it's her compassion for others, her understanding their ideas and making connections uh, to her own. Whatever it may be, Han is an exceptional human. Her teachers comment that Han is thinking is sophisticated, polished, and fluid, that she's exemplary, enthusiastic, and insightful, and that she grasps nuance immediately and can communicate complex ideas with great clarity. I challenge you to find another student who has more passion for learning and willingness to share it with the community. I would say that as my own editorial comment, I'd like to add that Hannah is also a pain in the neck in all of the best ways. <laughs> she doesn't back down from intellectual fight and gives no quarter to lazy thinking. To paraphrase Noor, who said this in a different context, I'm trying to stay on Hannah's good side in anticipation for when she rules the world. <laughs> Congratulations, Hannah. <laughs> yeah, turn it over. Less than one week after arriving on campus as a third former, her art teacher, Mrs. Duffy, shared this about Marilee. She is engaged, communicative, and inquisitive, and today we add a wonderful and appropriate amount of sass. <laughs> I can't think of a more succinct way to describe Marilee's academic and creative pursuits at Millbrook. For four years, she has remained intrinsically interested and motivated, unafraid to take risks, and fascinated with the joy of discovery. If you've been lucky enough to read some of her creative essays or to browse through her art portfolio, you can see and feel that Marilee demonstrates a level of maturity, sense of direction, and ability to focus that is far beyond her years. She received consistent praise from her teachers for her leadership in classroom discussions, showing just the right balance of empathy and conviction. And that sass Miss Duffy mentioned? Oh yeah, the Southern Belle knows when it's time to be the raging Cajun. <laughs> Marilee's self-confidence and unwavering moral compass have led her to be a voice both in and out of the classroom, 
As a two-year dorm leader and prefect, she is, a diligent, she is diligent in her pursuits of truth, and she is filled with compassion as she works to make Millbrook the best it can be for future Mustangs. Congratulations on your own indelible, indelible personal Millbrook journey, Marilee, and welcome to the Complotis Society. Next up, we have uh, Miss Allen for Anna Wilson. Raise your hand if you've ever been to silent study. <laughs> Anna, hopefully you are raising your hand the highest. I am pretty sure Anna has been to every single silent study that has been offered during her four years at Millbrook. Anna goes to silent study to work, to learn, to completely immerse herself in her course material. She goes to silent study because she has incredibly high academic standards for herself, and she also knows how she studies best. So whether it is snowing or raining or a blackout, or all of her friends are in the barn, Anna is at silent study. Anna wants to learn for the sake of learning, and she does a deep dive into every class she takes. Anna has nearly maxed out our curriculum, taking the highest classes we offer in every subject and earning top grades across the board. However, what many people do not know about Anna is that school is not easy for her. Anna goes to silent study and extra help and stays up late and gets up early and sometimes works all day on a Sunday because learning is important, really important to Anna. It is not easy for Anna. Anna's teachers describe her as a keen observer and a listener, optimistic and the hardest working student in the class. She embraces that which she does not know and forges ahead, never never settling until she understands the why. She is also the first in line to ask for clarification or to further discuss, discuss an issue with a teacher. Finally, she is articulate. Every word matters to Anna. Whether in her writing or speech, she thinks hard before saying what she has to say. And when she puts pen to paper, she can take your breath away with the depth and breadth of her writing. Anna, you are intellectually curious, hardworking, and dedicated to learning. You truly are a scholar, and I am so proud of you. Congratulations on this honor. <laughs> and next up, Hanji Shu will be int introduced by Mr. Castertano. Beyonce, Bono, Madonna, Sting, all so famous they need just one name. At Millbrook, there is Hanji. One name, one person packed with so many personae. There is Hanji, the campus conscience, imploring us to make double-sided copies and to take better care of the planet. There is Hanji, the creator of beautiful music, whether at the keyboard or leading Millbrook singers. There is Hanji, the architect and igloo builder, who found joy in her creation and shared it so generously with the community. There's Hanji, the outrageous, who stood motionless in a self-made hazmat suit in a garbage can for three hours in the dish room. There is Hanji, the organized, whose detailed color-coded schedules and to-do lists are works of art and overwhelming at once. There's Hanji the pragmatist, who strives to focus on what she can control rather than wasting energy on what she can't. 
There's Hanji the scholar, whose curiosity seems insatiable, as does her love of learning. There's Hanji the generous and wise, who in her multifaceted chapel talk expressed her frustration with test-centered learning and her understanding that the process itself is what's most important. One name, one person, with so many interests, a genuine polymath, a true embodiment of all that Millbrook expects of its cum laude inductees. Congratulations, Hanji. As we conclude the cum laude induction ceremony, thank yous as always are in order. First to Ms. Havard, secretary of Millbrook's cum laude chapter for guiding us through the selection process. To Mrs. Dalton, who I think is usually, there she is, is in the back, who has organized all of this and made it happen. And to the advisors for their remarkable, wonderful, loving comments. Congratulations to our cum laude inductees, it's now in time to enjoy dinner together. <laughs>